To celebrate the return of football, TIFO is offering 30-day free trials to The Athletic, the home of the world's best football writing. Sir Alex Ferguson once said that attack wins you games, but defence wins you titles. In the first Premier League season, United won the title, conceding nine fewer goals than the next best team defensively, but having been outscored by Blackburn Rovers by one. And Liverpool's acquisitions of Virgil van Dijk and Alisson have been credited with contributing hugely to their title win and to last season's Champions League, tightening up a defensive unit that had often looked shaky. So was Sir Alex right? Well, looking at the Premier League since it began in 1992-93, not including the current season, a few things are notable. The team with the highest total of goals scored won 17 of 27 titles. The team with the lowest total of goals conceded won 11 titles. And the team with the best goal difference won 19 titles. Only six times did a team manage to top all three categories, and they are generally considered all-time Great League teams. They were Manchester United in 2000-2001, Arsenal in 2003-04, Chelsea in 5-6, tied with Manchester United for goals scored, United again in 7-8, Manchester City in 2011-12, and in 2017-18. Only three times has a side won the league and not been the best in any of these categories. They were Arsenal in 97-98, Leicester City in 2015-16, and Chelsea in 2016-17. So, the team with the best defensive record winning the title is a more recent phenomenon. While it applied to that United 92-93 side, it only happened another three times up to and including 2003-04, but after that, it happened a further seven times. It's also worth noting just how important goal difference is. Of course, it's much better to be great at both ends, as one would expect. For example, in 2014-15, Chelsea won the title conceding only 32 goals, with a goal difference of 41. The next best defensive team was Southampton, who conceded only 33 times, but they finished in 7th with a goal difference of 21 because they found scoring hard. Omar Chowdhury from 21st Club neatly sums it up. If you're a very good defensive team, it means matches are lower scoring and therefore you are more vulnerable to dropping points in draws against weaker teams. Whereas if you're an attacking team, it's easier to blow away weaker opponents. And other studies have borne this out. When the numbers game authors Chris Anderson and David Sally looked at data from the Premier League, Serie A, La Liga and the Bundesliga, they found that between 1991 and 2010, the best defence will pick up a championship 46% of the time. The best attack, meanwhile, won the championship 51% of the time. There was a variety among the leagues, too. The Bundesliga and Serie A saw a greater number of seasons won by the best defence compared to the best attack, while La Liga and the Premier League saw the reverse. But in short, while it's marginal, it's better to have a good attack. As the book points out, the flaw with just looking at output is that you don't know how the team won points. Did they attack or look to keep it tight? So they investigated. They conducted analysis of Premier League matches between 2001-2 and 2010-11 to compare the value of goals scored and goals conceded. And what's noticeable from their work is that when looking at avoiding defeat rather than winning, the goals clubs didn't concede were each 33% more valuable than the goals that they scored. This means that when looking at winning, scoring goals and not conceding goals are of roughly the same value. When considering how not to drop points by losing, it's more valuable to focus on defence. And it's very hard to work out a value in points or wins or avoiding losses that each player brings. This is because football is a hugely complicated game where so many thousands of actions, some measurable and some not, contribute to a performance. However, we can look at Liverpool's goalkeeping situation and infer a few things. Comparing the last three seasons, it's very clear that even if Alisson cannot be credited specifically with winning games or not losing them, he is a huge improvement on what's gone before. Not only does he have the lowest goals conceded per 90 of any of Liverpool's five keepers in the last three seasons, which is of course partly a team effort, he's also got the best save percentage. And crucially, when considering his post-shot expected goals plus or minus, which is the post-shot expected goals value minus actual goals conceded, he's exceptional. In simple terms, in the last two seasons, Alisson has prevented 8.6 goals that, based on their post-shot XG, would be expected, on average, to go in. 
Mignolet and Adrian, on the other hand, let in more goals than on average one would expect from the shot's expected goals value. Here, at least, Alisson's value is clear. And, as we've seen from Anderson and Sally's work, when avoiding defeat, these goals prevented were worth a third more than goals scored at the other end. So, in Liverpool's case, upgrading their defence and goalkeeper will certainly have helped them avoid defeat. And this put them in the hunt for the title because upgrading a pretty poor defence and making it world-beating then provided a platform for their superb attack. Not only could they now achieve victory in games, they could also avoid losing them. And that balance, really, is what wins titles. Essential reading for Liverpool supporters. The story of how Jurgen Klopp walked into Anfield and turned Liverpool into title winners. James Pearce and Simon Hughes of The Athletic bring you the complete account. And to check it out, you can get a 30-day free trial. Get access to James and Simon's writing, insight, behind-the-scenes information, and even their fantastic podcast, The Red Agenda. That, plus every other Premier League club and even 10 other sports, all covered with the same attention to detail. So, visit theathletic.com forward slash TIFO football to sign up. And thanks for watching today's video.